The movie begins as the Allied military police and soldiers discover the bloody remains of over 70 American soldiers of the massacre near Melmody. The Germans attack the unarmed prisoners, killing most of them. General Eisenhower declared that when the war ended, all German officers involved in the massacre would be tried for war crimes and severely punished. Three weeks earlier, an army of Germans attacked and overwhelmed the Allied soldiers in the Ardennes forest. The Germans capture around 100 American soldiers. A wounded man is yelling out in pain, and medic Stephen Gould tries to help him, only to be assaulted by a cruel Waffen SS soldier. Another American soldier, Private Shirley Kendrick, has his precious cigarettes taken away. They are herded into a field, and the Germans go through their pockets, taking Bibles, cigarettes, money, and other valuables. One soldier, Corporal Nathan Deacon Greer, has his Bible taken away from him. Luckily, he gets it back by negotiating with the German soldier in his native language. His close friend, Staff Sergeant Gordon Gunderson, stands beside him and compliments his negotiation skills. Some soldiers think they will be shot, and one even tries to run but is shot and killed. In the ensuing confusion, the Americans grab a rifle from a German and kill him, prompting every German soldier to open fire. The German that had attacked Gould kills the wounded man he was working on as Gould tries to run with him. The ones who hadn't already been shot and killed ran into the forest, followed by the Germans. Gould hides behind a log, but the same German soldier, who killed his patient finds him and makes him stand up. Suddenly, Deacon appears, grabs the rifle from the enemy's hands, and knocks the German down. Gould urges him to shoot, but Deacon lets him run free, not wanting to shoot an unarmed man. Gould becomes angry with Deacon and yells at him for not killing the enemy. But they are interrupted by Gunderson, who waves them over to take cover. Back in the field, Germans go between the dead soldiers, shooting all that may still be alive. After the bloody task is complete, they refuel their vehicles and leave. Kendrick emerges beneath a dead American soldier and runs into the forest, where he meets Gould, Gunderson, and Deacon. Gould fixes Kendrick's bullet wound while they discuss what to do next. Gunderson, who takes command of the group, suggests they find a place to hide, as they are behind enemy lines and have only one stolen German rifle with only four rounds left. They return to Allied lines and wait for the Allies to rejoin the fight. So, with one rifle, they begin to walk, with Deacon holding the rifle, leading them. They return to the field and find no survivors or weapons left, but they find a destroyed ambulance. They loot what they can from the dead soldiers' bodies, and Gunderson sends Deacon out to find shelter, as he is visibly disturbed by looting from the dead. Gunderson gives him a heavy coat from one of the corpses to help him deal with the cold. As Deacon walks through the forest, now wearing a heavy coat, he finds a doll lying on the ground and is visibly spooked by it, but when he looks back, it is gone. While Deacon is gone, Gould tells Gunderson that he thinks Deacon is shell-shocked. Kendrick voices his concern over Deacon and whether or not he is qualified to hold the weapon. But Gunderson defends Deacon, saying he saved him multiple times and reminded him that Deacon got the gun from the German earlier. Then, Deacon returns after an hour later. Deacon leads the group to a small shed that seems to be bombed. Gould discovers a small compartment under the shed while Deacon takes the first watch. Gould, who seems suspicious of everyone, asks Gunderson why he and Deacon are close. Gunderson answers that Deacon is a good guy with no vices at all, which is why they gave him the nickname Deacon, and he is also a great sharpshooter. Gunderson reveals his hometown, Chicago. Gould is from Brooklyn. Kendrick is from Louisiana. Gunderson also tells Deacon to be from Arizona. Meanwhile, Deacon hears a noise and looks up. He sees a person standing in the field. When Deacon brings up his rifle, the person is gone. Believing that his mind is playing tricks on him, he begins to pray. Deacon reads his Bible and looks at a picture of his wife, which he had hidden in his Bible. Deacon hears another noise, and looks up, believing it to be another trick of his mind, but instead sees a German jeep heading toward him. He runs inside and hides in the compartment with the others while Kendrick shows Gould a cool card trick. The American soldiers hope the jeep will pass, but it doesn't. The Germans stop outside, and once they determine that no one is there, they set up inside. Unbeknownst to them, the American soldiers are in the compartment they found on the floor earlier. The Germans eat, laugh, talk, and listen to German radio traffic. They hear a plane crash near them, pack up, and head out to investigate. The American soldiers exit the compartment, while Deacon, who understands German, interprets it as something about the Meuse River and a plane crash. As they head toward the impact, they find a man stuck in a tree. Gunderson orders Kendrick, the biggest of them, to get him down. As the pilot is free, he immediately threatens Kendrick with his sidearm, believing them Germans in disguise. He makes the Americans answer a series of questions, some of which they get wrong. Winley eventually believes them and releases Kendrick. Kendrick, at this point, decides he does not like this man. 
The pilot asks where their command post is and introduces himself as Flight Sergeant Oberon Winley of the Royal Air Force. Winley reveals that he is intelligence vital to the Allies and must reach Allied headquarters as soon as possible. They head back to the shed, where Winley explains what kind of information he has which will significantly aid the Allies in the ongoing Battle of the Bulge, which could save a lot of troops. The others are reluctant, but eventually agree to get him across 20 miles behind the enemy lines to army intelligence. While on foot through the heavy snow, Deacon feels like something is watching him, but it's gone when he turns to look at it. Gould notices Deacon's jumpiness and asks about how he knows the German language. Deacon reveals that he picked up the language when he was in Berlin as a missionary. Their apparent dislike between Winley and Kendrick causes friction from the earlier rough introduction. Soon, they find an abandoned house, and Kendrick makes sure it is clear, thankfully, the only occupants are birds. Gunderson takes the first watch, but Deacon volunteers to do it. Gunderson orders him to sleep, knowing he hasn't slept in days. Deacon soon falls asleep while reading his Bible but immediately wakes from a nightmare. Gould notices this but doesn't ask about it. Meanwhile, Gunderson falls asleep while on watch, but he wakes as he hears footsteps nearby and sees German soldiers walking past their hideout. Thankfully, they are overlooked, and Deacon also takes a look. They make hot drinks as they take watch, and Deacon reveals that he recently got a letter saying that his wife is pregnant and is nearly due. Moments later, they continue their trek, with Deacon taking the lead. They stop as Gunderson tries to find their position on the map. Winley asks them if they have secrets to share in building camaraderie. Deacon and Kendrick share theirs, but Winley makes fun of Kendrick for his. When Kendrick asks Winley for his secret in return, he doesn't want to, and they all continue their journey. Soon, Deacon's psychosis continues to escalate as his visions intensify. He sees a woman and a child, begging them not to kill him. Gunderson and Gould tackle him and cover his mouth as German soldiers are nearby. Gunderson reveals to Gould that Deacon accidentally killed two women and six children in a recent skirmish while trying to take out a sniper. Gunderson decides to give the rifle to Kendrick while he scouts the area, and the others watch Deacon. The deep religious feelings of Deacon and contrasted with the agnostic Gould as each of them tells the story of holding a dying soldier. When Gould asks him why he likes the Germans, he says they are the same as them, just wearing different uniforms. Deacon's answers anger him, and he walks up ahead of him. Later, the snow falls harder, making their trek more and more difficult. Kendrick falls through a shed. Winley suggests they leave him, as helping an injured Kendrick will lessen their time. Gunderson insists that nobody gets left behind. The men stumble upon a small house, they hide in the shed while Gunderson checks out the house. Deacon insists on going with him, but Gunderson orders him to stay and watch out for the others. He discovers a French woman and her child occupy the house. Initially, the woman points a knife at him, but he puts it down as he sees the little girl watching them scared. They are warmly welcomed by Madame Catherine Thierry and her daughter, Sophie, who provides them shelter and food. A massive winter storm slows the group up at the woman's place. Winley tries to take off alone, believing he can reach his destination by the following day. He gives his remaining cigarettes to Gunderson for Kendrick, who has been asking for one since they met. A German patrol soon shows up at the house, they try to take advantage of Thierry, but Deacon stops them. The soldiers attack the Germans, while the sharpshooting Deacon misses an escaping German at point-blank range twice. The German is caught by Winley and is returned to the group. As they argue about whether they should execute the German prisoner, Deacon recognizes him as Rudolf Gertz, whom he once encountered in his missionary work. He claims his missing the escaping German must be a divine intervention, as he never misses a shot. During the night, Deacon allows Gertz to escape in exchange for some information about troop movements. The soldiers leave the following day, grabbing weapons from the German truck, but it is out of fuel, so they continue on foot. They find a group of German soldiers and decide to sneak through rather than fight, but Gunderson is shot and killed by a German patrol. Gould urges Deacon to go, as they can't do anything to help Gunderson, who is already bled out quickly. A full-scale fight ensues, and Winley is wounded. Kendrick helps Winley up as they move through the woods. Gould tells Kendrick to leave Winley, but he insists on carrying him. They find a hiding spot while Gould treats Winley's gunshot wound. Their position is soon compromised, a shootout occurs, and Kendrick is shot carrying Winley to safety. The two finally make peace, with Winley giving him a cigarette just before Kendrick dies. Winley tries to escape, but he falls into a river and is saved by Gould and Deacon. A German soldier approaches the three survivors as they try to revive Winley. It turns out to be Rudolf Gertz, the German soldier whom Deacon had let escape the night before. He allows them to run, grab an abandoned jeep, and head toward the Allied lines. Disguised as German medics with a wounded soldier, they work their way through the German lines and even help them with their jeep stuck in the mud. However, 
Germans hear Gould speaking in English in order to shoot at the jeep. Deacon continues to drive away, pushing through the enemies. The Americans, thinking they are German, begin shooting at them, and the Germans are firing at them from behind. Deacon tries to hold off the Germans while Winley escapes with Gould but is shot and killed in the firefight. His dying vision is of the family he accidentally killed. Winley and Gould make it to Allied command, and the critical information helps stop the German offensive leading to an Allied victory in the Battle of the Bulge. Gould finds Deacon's body and takes his Bible, thanking him for saving his life, and he nods thanks to Gertz, who is being arrested. The movie ends as Gould treats a German soldier, who he remembers as the cruel Waffen-SS soldier from the massacre, following after in Deacon's kindness. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.